Well, in our effort to get interesting speakers down here at Expats Club, we've really hit the jackpot today with uh, our special guest, Brian Bennett, who is a film... Uh, you're a film fan at first, I should think, are you? Film fan first, yes. And the director of the Bangkok Film Festival. The original director of the Bangkok <laughs> Film Festival, yes. Yeah, how did you get to start it? How, you know, what um, made you want to do this? Well, before that, I actually become a filmmaker itself, doing documentary films about environmental issues. And then those get invited to film festivals, and I said, wow, film festivals have a lot of different films we never get to see. And then coming back to Thailand again, I said, oh, we should start something like this in Thailand, too, a film festival, bringing in films from around the world. Yeah. Uh, you're concentrating on short films. Why is that? Well, now we've gone from the big festival, like the Cannes Film Festival, the Toronto Film Festival, we get big films. And now, because of the day and age, people are making shorter films. You have YouTube, Vimeo, mm -hmm. and people have iPhones, they've got Galaxies, and a lot more people have attention spans that are much shorter, yeah. and they have much yeah. more capability of making a short film with their handheld device. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let's do something that people are attuned to and sensitive to and get a message out. I don't need to make a two-hour film. I can make a five-minute film and put it up on YouTube and make a message. And it's uh, a great thing for creative people to um, get a message over quicker in a short space of time, isn't it? Correct, it is. So I thought that would be a good venue for having people get involved and making their point in nine minutes or less. So tell us a little bit about uh, your last film festival and the winners. Yes, the last film festival was in 2012 in June. We had it at Paragon Cineplex, and it was very, very good. We had films contributed with the theme of a heart being in their films. And it was very exciting because our first prize was 600,000 bots. So we got a lot of entries in, a lot of people submitting to see if they could actually win the big prize. And some just doing it on their iPhones. The winning film was shot on its iPhone, correct, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, that's amazing for today, the fact that uh, almost anybody could make a film if they really put their, their mind to it. You're right, it was. And then I asked the director, how did you get such good sound? And he goes, well, I just used my microphone off the iPhone. <laughs> oh, my God, it's that good? Wow. So it was quite amazing. So it helps everybody along and shows everybody has the possibility of contributing, getting the message out. Well, we've seen with viral films that uh, go completely sort of worldwide on YouTube, uh, how quick uh, something like this can spread. And I guess like a, a film festival like y yours kind of bigs it up a little bit, you know, and gives them a, a, a stepping stone. Well, I think so, and that's what we want to have happen, is that someone can go out, they're very creative as a person, and they stitch together a film, and then if it's discovered or picked up, they say, wow, this guy's got a lot of talent. Just like the director who made our winning film, Video Call. I watched his film, and I was very touched. Prince Chatri, our huge filmmaker here in Thailand, mm -hmm. he was on our jury, and he said, yeah, it was very moving. He watched it three times. I've watched this film many times, and it's very touching at the mm -hmm. end to see how they combine this. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel good that he had an opportunity to express himself, and we hope in the future he'll be making larger films or impacting the world in bigger and better projects. I was interested to hear you say that uh, your, your dream is that it's going to be shown on a, a, an airplane somewhere, and Steven Spielberg will see one of these films and go, I've got to give this guy a chance. Yeah, so that was our dream is to give people exposure for making a short film. So I made a call to Thai Airways, and we said, okay, we have this short film festival. It would be great if you could show it on your plane. Yeah. And at first they're like, nah, I don't think so. We like to show Hollywood films because yeah. who would want to see your short film? No one's going to want to do that. We spend a lot of money buying the rights to Hollywood films. I said, yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that's true. I said, but in this case, you're showing films that were from the festival made locally. And to tell you the truth, a lot of people don't have time for two hours, but maybe they'll watch a film nine minutes or less or watch two films nine minutes or less. And maybe a lot of people do think about, oh, well, the films are about a heart. Maybe that in itself will make people read it. And a lot of people don't have the attention span for long films. And you do want to bring more people into Thailand, your Thai airways. And for some reason, they kind of smiled at each other, and they said, maybe we'll give, give this a roll. Right. So they approved it, and we're hoping to get them back next year, too. Um, so sometimes you go to the cinema, you see a big Hollywood blockbuster, and it, it leaves you cold. You're not going to want to sit again. But uh, I guess with some of these films, uh, they do, uh, as you say, they touch you in some sort of way. 
Yes, it is. It's very touching. And one of the films, um, Where the Heart Is, was made by a Thai woman who had been living in Japan for over 19 years. And then she came back to Thailand to, to see her family. And then she went, as the story says, where her heart is. She also realized, I've been living in another country, but my heart really still is in mm -hmm. Thailand. The food that I love, the family, my friends are all here. And she speaks Japanese in the film. So it's like on the outside, she learned about being Japanese yeah. and speaks the language. And that was very touching, too. And it wasn't, maybe it was a docudrama type of film, but it was good to see her opportunity to give the expression about what it's like to be abroad and come back home mm -hmm. and where is your heart. So let's talk about this year's uh, festival and uh, the competition and you've got a theme for this year? Yes, the theme or the signature item this year is waterway. So that can mean a river, a stream, or it can be a klong. In Thailand there's a lot of klongs, which could be a canal right. in an English expression. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an opportunity to make some really interesting films because you got kayaking, all you know, different activities that happen on mm -hmm. rivers. How do you come up with these, uh, you know, the, the themes? You know, is it just purely random? Yes, in a general statement, it's just people casting out different ideas of where it could go. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes I try to think of what's something good for this locale that would be good. Yeah. Some things I think of too is maybe one year I want to do mango, I want to do papaya. Mm -hmm. I want to do sticky rice. I guess the connection can be quite loose, really, can't it? It's, it's just a, a question of getting that w the waterway in there somewhere. Right, exactly. Or could it be like an analogy? It could be an analogy <laughs> if you want to take it further. Or it could just be a film about anything as long as you have the symbol in there in yeah. some way. Yeah. There's no structure. The film has to be about a waterway. It just needs to be in the film. Or you can make the film about sticky rice and just if been anything, and then somebody just walks by a sticky rice stand on the street with Guy Young, and that's enough to get it in there. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Um, what I was uh, quite impressed with, with the, uh, the clip that you showed, was the acting. I mean, th these are amateur actors, aren't they? But, I mean, it, it, was, it was totally convincing. I thought so, too. I thought it was really, really amazing the way they did it. And if you watch the other nine Film Fest finalists, it is. It's all people that are no experience. Yeah. And then they make this incredible film. They're touched by it. They like the script. Yeah. And they're able to do it. And that's maybe one of the passions I found when I started making films also is that if you have a good script, even though you're not paying someone for it, they read through and they go, I'm touched by it. I want to do that. They feel a passion inside. Then they're natural and can give out the message. Yeah. Yeah. The script is everything, really, isn't it? It's true. It's the backbone. And from there, you've got to find the talent to bring it together and make it work. Yeah. Plus, the other thing is when you don't have a budget, you've got to find someone who's touched by it that will yeah, join in. Yeah. Now, I had a personal experience uh, a couple of years ago because I, I was a songwriter and I wrote a song which was uh, put into a little, uh, an independent small budget film called Little Miss Sunshine, which oh, then went on to wow, win, right. win Oscars. Wow, wow. You know? and, uh, but I think the, the main thing of that, and it did win Best Screenplay, uh -huh. was the, the scripts, you know, it's just a fantastic story. Right, right. So I think, you know, it's the same thing with this, isn't it? If you've got a, a great story, um, as long as you can get that story and touch people with it, I think that's all that matters. It doesn't matter about the length of the film. That's very, very true. But that's the other thing I like so much about the short film festival. You can make a two-hour film, but then when you have to make that same script or same idea and make it nine minutes or left, less you gotta pick out the best parts and make something that just rings somebody and hits yeah, them good yeah. just like the final film video yeah. call now he made you feel so much within nine minutes from absolutely incredible a range of emotions yeah you felt yeah. this love between the girl and the guy yeah. then you also felt this very Thai thing of being jealousy and rage about why you're answering my phone yeah. so now all of a sudden you've got a relationship flowing and you got the rage taking place into the reality of, oh my God, a tragic situation is going and, and on. And very cleverly, he leaves it completely open at the end so you can make your own mind up right. of how the film will end. Yep. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. It was very, very creative. I was, yeah. wow, nine minutes you got the Excellent whole stuff. So if anybody wants to uh, see the full films and stuff, you know, they can get hold of this DVD and they can um, go to the website, and it's at ninefilmfest.com. They can also like our Facebook page, which is Facebook slash Nine Film Fest and join in and get updated with different information about the festival. Nine Film Fest, that's what you've got to go to. And um, I, I wish you luck with this because it's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, venture and uh, I just hope it grows and grows. We hope so too. Thank you. Brian Bennett, thank you very much indeed. Expats Club, as you can see, a very interesting morning we've had this morning. And uh, 
if you want to come down and sample the breakfast, meet new friends, there's lots of free advice to be got in the foyer on insurance, on law, on visas, on fire extinguishers even. <laughs> come down and visit us at the Expats Club every Sunday morning. The whole thing kicks off at 10 o'clock uh, for breakfast and then the meeting starts at 11.30 at the McCure Hotel just off of Second Road. We hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.